Hello. Welcome, everybody. We're live. It is 8.01, Thursday night, 4.20. We've got a good show here. I get to be the bearer of good tidings, and, and I get to read to you all from Fight and Flight by Scott Meyer. First one to respond, Gregory Murphy. Gregory, how are you? Daniel is joined. Hello, this, nice to see you, Daniel. Crispin, hey, bro, what's up? Jeff, Jeremy, nice to see you guys. And Dave, the amazing photographer, has joined us. It's awesome to see you guys. I'm glad to be back on this Thursday night. I just picked up my daughter from cheer practice. Poor girl, I had to pull her out 15 minutes early so I could make our start time, but she was a good sport about it. So, yes! Hey, Chelsea. Hey, Jason. Hey, Dave. Luke and PJ. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for coming. Good evening. You're halfway through an unwelcome quest right now, Daniel. Well, Scott and I talked, and we don't want to do any spoilers, so we're just going to read the first chapter from Fight and Flight. And what's exciting about it is it doesn't even come out. It hasn't even come out yet, so we get to a little sneak pre peek. And um, what's also exciting is I finished recording the whole thing last week. What's up, Nathan? Hello, Daniel. Woohoo! Randy, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Yo, Daniel is joined. I'm a hero. I can play a hero. I don't know if I am a hero. Patrick, what do it do? How are you, my friend? Hello, 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 guys. James, Ben, Scottson. Hello, everybody. Oh, Mr. Meyer, Mr. Meyer. So, Scott, I spent last week in your mind, so to speak, performing your mind, trying to take your mind and put it out there. And, uh, I gotta say, I'm really excited about this one. I think everybody's gonna have uh, have a good time listening and reading. But what's especially cool is that we're doing this as a Audible original, so it'll just be available as audio for the first six months, which is new to me. That's never happened. I think that's super cool. Yeah, so Scott's here, everybody. Say woo woo. Thank you, Scott, for allowing this to happen, letting us uh, get to do this, and for showing up. And a big thanks to Audible. Uh, they're the ones, uh, producing this. They're the ones that when I said I wanted to do a live reading before the book was released said, cool. And they're the ones that are going to give away five download codes. So five people will get a free download of Fight and Flight when it drops. So if you've already pre-ordered it, that kind of exempts you if you've already pre-ordered it, which I appreciate because you're ahead of the game. But for those of you who haven't, you have a chance to win five. Um, so it's awesome that they're supporting us. So everyone, thank you, Audible. Thank you for doing audiobooks and making uh, my life so great by giving me work and allowing me to do these cool projects. So I just pulled up our session here. I'm going to put on the headphones in a minute. And we've got uh, Scott here. So I, I think we're ready to go. Is everybody ready to go? I'm ready. All right, I see some thumbs up. Let's get going. Headphones, these are important. They make me feel like I'm in it. <sighs> Whew, how's everybody doing tonight? Can you give it as a gift, Jeff wants to know. Yes, yes, I think that's cool. After we do the reading, we'll uh, give those five away. I'm going to make you listen first. That way you don't just get yours and then skedaddle off to watching cat videos. All right, I'm live, so here we go. Scott, are you ready? Scott's ready. Scott's always ready. Uh-oh, I bumped my camera. <sighs> Load that file. Boop, 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 boop. All right. This is from the forthcoming Fight and Flight by Scott Meyer, criminal at large. One. The eight of us have been killed a combined total of 67 times, Jeff said. This strikes me as a problem. A youngish man in a silver sequined robe raised his hand. I'm not a school teacher, Martin. If you have a question, you can just ask. 
Martin glanced around at his friends, wearing their wizard robes and hats, seated in a cluster of chairs in Jeff's home, a small, unassuming blue hut that, thanks to a magical portal he'd created and a much larger hut out in the woods, appeared to be bigger on the inside than it was on the outside. Jeff stood at the front of the room, addressing them. Martin said, Sorry, the whole thing just kind of gave me a Hogwarts vibe. That's fine. Anyway, I don't have a question so much as a statement. None of us is dead. Yes, well, when I say we were killed 67 times, what I mean is that we were nearly killed 67 times. And we were only saved by the use of magic, or dumb luck. Then why not say that? I wanted an opening line that was a real grabber, something to get your attention before I show you the chart. Gary raises his hand. Raised his hand, excuse me. The loose sleeve of his black robe slid down to reveal a thin, bare arm, as the Dokken t-shirt he wore beneath it had short sleeves. Sorry. <clears throat> I find that funny. <clears throat> The pale skin of his arm almost matched the bleached white bone that made up his skeletal artificial leg. I have two questions. One is, aren't we all here for movie night? The other is, what chart? Jeff sighed. Yes, we are here for movie night. After we discuss the boring business of all of us nearly dying a whole bunch of times, we'll move on to the vital task of watching an old movie. A black man in a purple robe asked, What are we watching? Jeff said, Thanks for not raising your hand, Tyler. We're watching Mad Max Fury Road. Gary said, Mad Max? Good. Mel Gibson's the coolest. Martin said, Yeah, you're from 1992, aren't you? Yes. So? So enjoy enjoying Mel Gibson while you can. Jeff said, as for your second question, what chart? The chart I haven't shown you yet because I only just got my first sentence out before I got sidetracked. Jeff waved his magic wand and said, Montreal-la diagram. And he's, and he's, that's a drink break there. Hey, Morgan, how are you? Gregory, 81 people so far, that's not bad. And Jennifer, how are you? I had to take a sip because I got la- All right. Jeff waved his magic wand and said, Montreal diagram. An easel holding a large chart appeared next to him. The left side of the chart had a list of names of the wizards present. Along with- Along the top, Jeff had listed every event in which one or more of the wizards had nearly been killed, using shorthand titles like Orcs, Giant Squid, and Mud Elemental. A grid full of check marks illustrated which wizards had been nearly killed by each danger. The wizards were silent for a moment while they read and absorbed the information. Jeff said, I only included peril that we faced after finding the file, discovering that the world is a computer program, and coming back here to medieval England opposes wizards. Whatever trouble some of you might have gotten into to make you decide to come here is your own business. Britt the Younger adjusted her glasses, peering across the room at the chart. Huh. That's funny. I would have assumed that Martin had been... I would have assumed... I would have assumed that Martin had nearly been killed the most. But Philip just edges him out. Yes, Philip said, stroking his beard. But I'd have you know that all of the attempts on my life have happened since I met Martin. Martin said, Jeff, I have to object. You, you say that Philip nearly killed me in our first duel. That's just not true. Gwen shook her head, then brushed her light brown bangs out of her eyes and said, No, Martin, but the villagers thought he killed you. And let's face it, he could have if he'd wanted to. Easily, Philip said. Philip's back! Oh, Philip, I love him. Philip loves you. Philip, Philip wants to let someone use his voice for the answering machine. Who wants that? Hello, you've reached the voicemail of Scott Meyer. Please leave a message after the tone. Beep.
Uh, Jeff, I have to object. You say that Philip nearly killed me in our first duel. That's just not true. Gwen shook her head, then brushed her light brown bangs out of her eyes and said, No, Martin, but the villagers thought he killed you, and let's face it, he could have if he'd wanted to. Easily, Philip said. Tyler said, I see what you're getting at, Jeff. That's not a great safety record. But I mean, we are time-traveling wizards. Shouldn't we expect a certain amount of danger? Yes, that's my point. We should expect danger, but we don't. That's why we keep getting caught with our pants down. We wear robes, Gary said. Yes, Gary, now shut up. My point is that we need to be more prepared. We need to develop real means of defending ourselves and make sure that we have practice using them. Gary said, well, yeah, obviously. That's why I created the Cato Protocol. Yes, Jeff said, but I'm afraid that while having wizards just randomly attack each other without warning has been good for a few laughs, it hasn't really added to our tactical readiness. Tactical readiness? You've been hanging around with Roy too much. No, the rest of you haven't been hanging around with me enough. Roy was an older man from an earlier time, with a crew cut so precise and severe it had become a way of life. Gary asked, You want to hang out with me sometime? Roy said, I do not. <laughs> oh, Scott. These punchlines. Gary shook his head and waved his hands. Whatever. Look, the point is the Cato Protocol is in place so that we'll be ready for attacks and develop offensive weapons. And I think it succeeded. Roy said, that's because you've mistaken jumpiness for vigilance. And you're using the wrong meaning of the word offensive. We want offensive, as in the opposite of defense. Not offensive, as in it offends people. Like your inventions. The fart bomb. The helium voice spell and the commando ray. Martin said, Hey, you want to say hi? We have a visitor, everybody. Hold pause, pause. Everybody, I'd like to introduce, this is my daughter, lean in here. She wanted to say hi, she's the one, I was telling them how you sacrificed cheer practice 15 minutes so that I could come here and make this. So everyone say hi to River. River is a cheerleader, a amazing student, a fantastic daughter. She's beautiful. <laughs> she's smart. She's kind. I don't know where she gets it all. You say hi to everybody. Hello. Hello. Tell them how much you love my voices. They're amazing. <laughs> she totally lied. <laughs> I'm so good. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. I'm just teasing. So everyone say hi. Oh, there we go. Dave says hi. Dave is an amazing photographer. There's Daniel. These are all my Facebook friends. I've never met them in person, but they're awesome. Hello. Yeah, they're real. I'm pretty sure. Jason. Yeah, <laughs> they Jason? watch and everything. Hannah. Who's Hannah? Thanks for leaving cheer practice early. See, they appreciate it. Hannah Griffiths. Hello. Yeah. Who's Jasper. No, her name is not a Firefly reference. Uh, uh, she. It's. It's a we lived on the river in Yosemite, which is called Merced River. And so we named a river because Merced wasn't as pretty. <laughs> I think that's a pretty name. It Merced. is pretty good. But I liked river and she is a river. So Doesn't Merced mean like holy? Claire wants to know how you're doing today. I'm Claire doing Dubon. good. How are you? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, some days I don't know if I'm real Hello. either. All right. All right, we're going to continue. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Thanks for letting me out early, okay? Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, honey. Bye-bye. There you go. She was wanting to see how this all worked, so I told her she could stop by. I hope you don't mind. Yeah, she's pretty cool. All right. I have a... Someone's talking about lost audio. Can you guys hear me okay? Whoops. All right. You're all subroutine, says Daniel. Yes, we are. We all are. I'm actually doing another series. I'm starting another one that I've been recording all week that is another, we're in the, you know, computer program kind of world, and it's really good, but it's a little more fantasy, a little more um, thieves and stuff like that. All right, let's get back to it. Thanks, guys. Daniel lives near, oh, you do? Oh, I know Vesalia. 
All right, here we go. Let's get back to it. <clears throat> Martin said, I've been meaning to ask you, how did you make a ray that causes people's underwear to disappear? Gary smiled. It was a happy accident. I was working on a wedgie ray, and it malfunctioned. Britt said, Look, Jeff, you're right to be concerned. But if you're this worried about it, why not do what we women did with Atlantis? Create a new place for yourself somewhere far away that will be safe, instead of living among all these primitive villagers. Jeff said, Two reasons. One, if you look at the chart, you'll see that the vast majority of the things that have threatened our lives have come from other magic users, not the locals. Two, if you look closely at your own row on the chart, you'll see that more than half the times you've nearly been killed took place in Atlantis. Roy nodded. It's impossible to create a safe place for people to go, because it becomes unsafe when people go there. Jeff said, I don't understand why you aren't taking... I don't understand why you all aren't taking this more seriously. We've all nearly been killed multiple times. Gary lost a leg. I had my powers stripped away, then got dropped off of a cliff. You all nearly weren't able to hop back in time and save me. This is serious. Our lives are at stake. Yeah, Martin said. But while you point out that we've nearly died 67 times, I'd remind you that we figured out a way to save ourselves 67 times. We always think of something. Philip said, Yes, but Jeff has a point. It would be smart of us to try and think of something in advance instead of waiting for things to go wrong. What do you have in mind, Jeff? I propose that we each develop a weaponized macro, a spell that will be a useful weapon, something that has real teeth. Then, when they're done, we'll share them with each other. And who do we test them on? Tyler asked. The locals? Each other? We'll test them in practice using them in regularly scheduled, organized skirmishes against some sort of artificial opposing army that we'll create. That way we won't have to pull our punches. Gary said, that actually sounds like fun. I had a burp. Martin. That actually sounds like fun, Philip said. All right, let's put it to a vote. All in favor of enacting Jeff's plan, raise your hand. Everybody raised a hand. And everybody in favor of having Jeff create the opposition army, raise your hand. Everybody raised their hand but Jeff. Jeff said, well, wait one minute. Well, this was my idea. Why do I get the hardest job? Roy said, because you suggested it. You never worked in a corporate environment, did you? But why do I have to do it alone? I won't have time to work on a weapon of my own. Martin said, Are you kidding? Jeff, if you do this right, you'll have the best weapon of any of us. You'll have an entire army you can summon and command any time you need it. And it can be any kind of army you want. Jeff said, Oh, that's... Okay, here's a cool little backstage thing. So, uh, normally in the book... It'll say, Jeff said, oh, that's dot, dot, dot. He paused, thinking, then continued. A really good point. Any suggestions? So I have here highlighted in red, he paused, thinking, then continued, because Scott is so confident in my ability, he thinks that I can just act that. Which I can. Which is kind of cool. I know. It's kind of, here, you want to see it? Let's see if I can get it to show you. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I act that out. Jeff said, oh, that's... Okay, wait, hold on. <laughs> First, I'm going to read it as it's written, and then I'm going to act it for you, and you're going to see how much better that is. Okay, read it as written, then acting. Jeff said, oh, that's... He paused, thinking, then continued. A really good point. Any suggestions? Okay, now we're going to do it. Jeff said, Oh, that's... <laughs> a really good point. <laughs> I failed. 
people. I can do it. Jeff said, oh, that's a really good point. Any suggestions? Gary said, yeah, you should. Does anyone but Gary have any suggestions? Oh, come on. That's not nice. I'm going to be fighting whatever you come up with, too. And of all of us, I'm the one who's been hurt the worst. If anything, my opinion should count double. Tyler said, I have a suggestion, Jeff. Yes, Tyler, Gary said. Man, what a ripoff. Tyler said, I suggest we hear Gary's suggestion. The other wizards groaned. Gary said, Thanks, Ty. Thank me by making a good suggestion that isn't a waste of our time. Right. Jeff, I think you should make an army of women. The wizards groaned again, louder. Tyler shook his head. You just couldn't do it, could you? It just wasn't in you. Why? Britt the Younger demanded. Why would Jeff make an army of artificial women? Gary said, why wouldn't he? Brett asked, did you miss the part where he said we're going to be fighting whatever it is he makes? Gary said, no, I didn't miss that. That's what I have in mind. He could make, what do you call them, Valkyries. The big tough women with the spears and helmets with wings on them. They'd be a challenge to fight. Brett... You have to admit that women are just as capable of fighting. <laughs> Brett, you have to admit that women are just as capable of fighting as men. Gwen said, he's right, Brit. You specifically do have to admit that. Brit narrowed her eyes to slits. Yeah, I suppose I do. So you're suggesting that Jeff make an army of tough female warriors for us to train against? Gary said, yeah. And they'll be strong? There's no point in doing it if they aren't. And fierce. I wouldn't have it any other way. I suppose I can get behind that. Philip leaned over, put his hand on Britt's shoulder and said, I'd hold off on endorsing his plan just yet. <clears throat> Gary... What would these female warriors look like? Like tough female fighters. Everyone sat silently, waiting for Gary to say more. They'd have great big swords and battle axes, and they'd be wearing armor. Still, nobody spoke. Like shiny metal bikinis. Britt let out a frustrated grunt. Philip said, There it is. Martin said, you're picturing them riding on giant tigers and wolves, aren't you? Gary pointed at Martin. Totally! <laughs> See, Martin gets it. Gwen said, You want us to train against an army that looks like it was airbrushed on the side of a van? Philip said, Gary's a necromancer. His entire life looks like it's airbrushed on the side of a van. Gary said, All right, fine. So you don't want the army of Valkyries, whatever. I don't hear any of you making any suggestions. Tyler said, It should be period appropriate. No jet fighters or anything. It needs to blend in with this time. Valkyries. They'd fit this time perfectly, Gary muttered. Gwen said, And it should look formidable. Whatever it is, just looking at it should scare you. Valkyries look formidable. Gary grumbled. Roy added, And the enemy should be resourceful and adaptable. It should change its tactics in reaction to ours. Valkyries are adaptable, Gary insisted. Really? Britt asked. How so? In what way, Gary, would you say that Valkyries are adaptable? Well... <laughs> It seems to me that I've seen pictures where they're in a snowy setting and they're wearing a fur bikini instead of metal. That's something. Yeah, that's something, all right. Britt scowled. Jeff said, Okay, this isn't getting us anywhere. I'll give it some thought and I'll try to come up with something that addresses all of your requests. Philip said, Very good. Jeff said, Except Gary's, of course. Philip said, very good indeed. That's it.
Chapter one is complete. So we'll post this afterwards and if you weren't able to see it, you'll be able to watch it then or you can watch it again. What? Thanks you all for listening. Ladies. I know, it's pretty laughable. The whole book is like that. It's really hard. Thank you, Scott. I got a well done. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, I had fun with this one. Just wait, there's some characters too. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, so let's give away some download codes. So these are just to rehash from Audible. They're giving us five to give away. And they're for this book, Flight and Fight and Flight by Scott Meyer. Uh, so if you've already bought a pre-order, because it hasn't been released yet, then you're out of the running. I'm sorry. But you're into the running for being awesome for getting a pre-order, and you're going to get your book right away, and you're really on top of things, and you should applaud yourself. Pat on the back. But if you haven't, and you're looking for a copy of this, um, then uh, we're going to do a little giveaway. So, oh, I can take these off, too. <clears throat> All right. Pick me, pick me, Daniel. So the first thing I want to know, bow, 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 I always ask about um, if anyone has uh, special need kids, because that's part of my um, jam. I like to help out any way I can. And I know I've had some people before. So is there anybody that has a special needs kid that I haven't given away something to? Uh, that'll be the first one. If you have a special need kids, or maybe your nephew or niece is a special need kid, or... Um, even if you're like a nurse and you take care of them, uh, something along that, I'd really appreciate it. And, uh, you do amazing things and you deserve to be rewarded in big ways other than this, but this is what I've got to do. So if anyone does, what I need you to do is, uh, type in that you are Jennifer. I see a me. Um, let's put you on as our first Jennifer. And if you can send me through instant message on Facebook, your email address, I can give it to audible and they'll get you set up with your free copy. Awesome. And, uh, oh, Scott's telling us something. So what I can tell you about the book is that the army Jeff creates is made up of, say, wait for it, dragons. Oh, my God. It's so awesome. Yes, and Daniel, you're, you count as well. Your wife, I would love to do that. Let's do, uh, so we have Daniel. We have two of them. That means um, if I missed anybody, I don't want to miss somebody. Um, whoops, sorry. All right, cool. I do, LaShawn, I missed you. So that's three, right? So we have Daniel and LaShawn, and our first was Jennifer. So three people, okay? I'd like you guys to send me your uh, just an email or whatever, and then you'll get hooked up uh, accordingly, okay? So that's awesome. Yeah, Daniel, you're welcome. That's so cool. So that's great. If there's any more, no Doom characters. <laughs> oh. PJ, did you listen to Authorities? It was good, wasn't it? I want him to write another one. I'm just scrolling through. Trevor, that's another one. So that's four, right? Trevor, did you hear me, Trevor? Trevor, I'll just say your name's is Philip. That'll get your attentions. Trevor has one as well. Oh, boy. Uh, it's not Doom Monsters. There's no Doom Monsters in the... No, there's no Doom Monsters, don't worry. Oberon? But that would be cross-genre. It'd be so weird to have Oberon. Who is this dog? He kind of sounds like me. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't sound like you at all. A little bit. You sound like me after I've had too much gin. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, guys. I think we're, yep, we're right at half an hour. I wanted to do it a half an hour, and we did that. So we've given four away. I have one more to give away. Uh, my birthday was April 14th. Does anybody have the same birthday? April 14th? That would be a good one. That was just a few days ago. I turned 22. I know. It's amazing. I look old for it, but it is. Uh, of course Philip's a gin man. He's from jolly old England. All they drink is gin. And I can't stand this stuff. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, hey, you've got a best friend that does a very close impression of Philip. I would love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. Bacon treats for you. One more from PG, PJ. Yeah, we need one more. April 23rd, April 26th. Whose son is? But I already pre-ordered, Jewel. 
You're so on it. I appreciate that you did that. Happy belated birthday, you liar. No, my birthday really was April 14th. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, thank you, Scott, for writing this book and letting us do this tonight. I really appreciate it. It's uh, No, he likes scotch. He does like scotch, Liz. You're right. And he likes gin. But gin makes him feel very patriotic. And the scotch is when he just wants to mellow out after he's had to deal with Martin and Gary and everybody. Yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Some of Atticus's tea. All right, so we'll do another one of these in a couple weeks, but Rachel, you're going to get it. April 16th is the closest I've seen. Let's do Rachel, all right? So we got our five, okay? And I appreciate you guys listening. Make sure you, um, any chance of a touch of Owen. from? All right, we'll sign off as Owen. Hold on. It is, it is a prophecy. Hold on. <clears throat> Owen. Irish Owen. Atticus. You're... <laughs> I can't do it. Owen's the one... I don't know why I have to be in the right zone for Owen. I don't know why. Let me see if I can look something up for Owen. Uh, do ask me another one. God damn it. Now you did that. Excuse my language. I gotta end on a good one. But the, Owen, for some reason, I always... I always freeze up on him. I don't know why. Superman. Oh, Atticus. You're a wee shite. And I'll kick your ass from here to Dernanog. Why do you always got to be coming up here talking to your dog? Your dog doesn't want to talk to you. Your dog wants to go out and play with his puppies. That's right, he's got puppies. How's that? Oh my God, Owen always stalls me. But I got it, I got it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a good night. And farewell all.